Good morning. Praise the Lord. We're going to do things a little differently this morning. Uh, in, a, uh, in a call to worship, we want to thank the Lord for being in the house of God one more time. We honor the Lord for his holiness, his wisdom, and his might. Uh, for our church announcements this morning, we ask that the saints of God be in prayer for uh, my wife, Sister Lorna Smith, who had surgery uh, this past week. The Lord blessed her with a sweet outcome, and she's at home already, uh, resting and healing. We thank the Lord for that. We ask that you also continue to keep all of our seniors in your prayers. Through this pandemic, a lot of our seniors live alone, and this could be an awful lonely time for our seniors. So we ask that you bear them up on eagles' wings and keep them before the Lord in prayer. The Walter Hart Scholarship Committee is taking names for the Greater Liberty Baptist members who will be graduating from high school and college for the year 2020. Please submit those names to the church office or to Elder Emmanuel Young. All ministry presidents, your first quarter of the year ministry report is due in the office by Monday, June the 1st. We will have our Wednesday Bible study, 2 p.m., live on Facebook and YouTube. For our giving, the word of God says to bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse and to prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. Saints of the living God, it is our responsibility to take care of the needs financially of the Greater Liberty Baptist Church. Amen. We cannot go to God and ask God for something better if we don't take care of what he's first supplied for us. Amen. And that's done through the tithe and the offering. The Lord said that that is holy unto him. So, through this pandemic, we have opened up avenues for you to be able to continue in your giving. One of the ways is PayPal, GLBC Finance Team at gmail.com. Our cash app is the dollar sign 330 Greater Liberty BC. Or you can put your time in the mail to the Greater Liberty Baptist Church, 330 Chestnut Street, Lexington, Kentucky, 40508. You do have the option of calling the church office at 859-252-2495 and give your name to the secretary and she will charge one of the deacons or Sister Adams to come to your home and pick your tithe up. Saints, let us be obedient to the word of God when it comes to giving to the Lord. Because all of it is his anyway. All of it is his. And he only asks us for 10 cents out of every dollar that he blessed us with. And I guarantee you, God can do more with the 10 than you can do with the 90. So that's our ways of giving. We thank you and we praise you and we look forward to when all of this is over with and we as the body of Christ can come back together and praise and worship our God. So those are our announcements for the day. We ask you to pray for our pastor as he prepares to come out and lead us, preach to us, thus saith the Lord, 
He has been in with the Lord. And I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us on this day. Saints, we have come as the body of Christ to do holy business for our King. We come in trouble times, but we have high spirits. For we know the eternal one is still on the throne. Yes, so saints, lift up holy hands. Yes, lift high your voices and praise the sovereign one. Yes, For holy yes, is sir. our God. Yes, sir. Mighty are his judgments. Yes, and he is all together lovely. Honor the Lord this day, saints. Honor the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I said, this is the day. Still that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad in. We are glad that you have tuned in to our 12 o'clock worship experience. We pray that something will be said or done to touch your hearts. Here at Greater Liberty, we believe that God is in control. Amen. And we still believe that if some sinner woman, man, boy, or girl is out there, you still can come just like you are. Even in the midst of this pandemic, God is still saving souls. Amen. Just quick praise and worship. We don't want, to, want you to know that the Lord is our light, our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Whom shall we be afraid of? If you out there in the class, just join us. Join in with me. Whom shall I fear? Whom 
shall I be afraid? I will trust in you. I will trust. Comes, comes from Psalms 27. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should, have, should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The wall shall rise up against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to cry in his temple. Right here. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he have me. He shall set me upon a rock. Let us pray. God, how we thank you. God, how we love you that you are a rock in the time of trouble. And God, we understand that when all else fails, we can go to the rock. When trouble surrounds me, God, we can go to the rock. When temptation is all around us, we can go to the rock. Even in the midst of this pandemic, God, we still understand that we can go to the rock. For you are the rock of our salvation. You are the joy and the strength of our life. God, you are he who promised and is able to perform whatever we can ask. So God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask that your will be done. We pray for thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. God, somebody needs you today. Somebody came in this troubled time. Somebody came with a bowed down head. Somebody came with a burden on their heart. God, we come and we leave it to you right now, God, because we understand that if we try on our own, we'll mess it up. But God, if we give it to you, you're able to perform exactly what you said you could do. God, we thank you that even in the midst of all of this, we're still able to worship your holy name. God, in fact, I can't do nothing but worship your holy name. Because, God, I understand that there are many cases of COVID-19 out there. But, God, I thank you that you let it bypass me. I thank you that you've given me a reasonable portion of help and strength. God, I thank you that day by day I'm still able to put one foot in front of the other and open my eyes and open my mouth and praise your holy name. God, for you're worthy. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You're holy. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We honor. We worship and we adore you. God, we pray for the sick and shut in. God, we pray that you touch their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you give us what we need in this season. God, we're not dependent on stimulus. We're not dependent on unemployment because we serve a God who supplies all of our needs. And with or without stimulus or unemployment, God, you're still making ways. You're still opening doors. You're still putting food on our table. You're still putting clothes on our back. God, we still have a roof over our head. And God, we say thank you that you're still supplying every one of our needs. God, we pray for this worship experience today. You said when the two or three are gathered in your name, you would be in the midst. So God, Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down right now. Be with our pastor as he prepares to bring your word. Let him stand boldly and proclaim the truth of your word. And God, the church is not closed, we're still open. So I pray that some sinner woman, man, boy, or girl will come running. What must I do to be saved? I need to know about this Jesus. Because you said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So God, we thank you today. Most of all, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus the Christ. 
that you sent to sacrifice his life for me and for those out there on Facebook last for Eric, for Underwood, for, for Nate, for, for Tim, for, for all of us, you sent your only begotten son. And God, we can say, here we are, standing ready to worship your holy name. We thank you today, God. We bless you. We love you. We give you glory. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. And all the saints of God said together, Amen. Oh!
Bible belongs to him and him alone. For he is the author and finisher of our faith. Yes, sir. He is the great I am. Yes, sir. He is the supplier and the sustainer. He is my all and the all. Yes, yes. Beloved, thank you for joining us this afternoon for this worship experience. We pray to our God that you are doing well, that your families are safe, that Jehovah by his divine providence has not allowed you to go without, but that you have food, shelter, warmth, Pray that you have all that you need as you go through these trying and unprecedented times. The good thing for the believer is that our God is still on the throne. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is not disturbed. He isn't caught off guard. He's not unaware of what's going on. He ain't coming up with a plan. He has the master plan. Yes, sir. And all things are working according to his will and his purpose. Oh, how I love him. I don't know about you, but when I just think about the goodness of the Lord yeah, yeah. and all that he's done for me. Yeah. My soul shouts hallelujah. Beloved, I love him. I love him. If he doesn't do anything else, he's done enough. I love him with every part of my being. He's been such a good God. I promise you, if you can just be grateful, even now, be grateful. Now. And the Lord will lift some burdens off of you. Yes, sir. He'll relieve you of some of that worry and anxiety. If you can just thank him in the midst of it all. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. For great is our God. Yeah. I want to get to the word today. Coming out of the gospel according to Luke. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 13. I pray that you have your Bibles. If you've been in my Bible study during midweek, I've been encouraging you to get off your cellular phones. And you're sitting at the house, surely you got a Bible at the house. Pull, pull your Bibles out. Dust them off. Something you can jot down notes in underline some stuff right in the margins maybe but it's just something about touching the paper maybe I'm just old school like that I know you new, you new school you fellas y'all y'all like them tablets and stuff but I like paper but Luke chapter 13 beginning at verse 6 it says, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three, three, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why encumbereth it the ground? Amen. And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it, and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Amen. 
Amen. That is the word of God for the people of God on this day. Beloved, I want to speak a few words today about fruitless trees. About fruitless trees. I am, I am convinced that it is God's will that his children shall bear fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Not that they might bear fruit, but that they shall. In other words, they will. Yeah. I, I believe that. I, I, I believe that one, because scripture actually tells me in John chapter 15, Jesus himself said, you did not choose me, but it is I who have chosen you. And not only did I do the choosing, but I also ordained that you should go forth and bring forth fruit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can check it for yourself in John 15 and verse somewhere around 15 or 16. But beloved, also that reminds me also of what Christ said, of what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 2 where he said that God also has ordained us unto good works, that we should walk in them. He also told us that it is I who works in you both to will and to do of my good pleasure. Why does God put all of these measures in place to ensure that we as his children, yeah. his beloved, his called, bring forth fruit. Yeah. All right. He does this because in calling us, in awakening our dead spirits, God did not leave us to ourselves. Amen. That's right. And in not leaving us to ourselves, and inhabiting us with the spirit of the holy God. He has gifted us with gifts of the spirit. He has assignments for each and every one of us. And the thing is, beloved, if we are to fulfill our purpose, and not only our assignments, but if we are to fulfill our purpose as the church, to go ye therefore, if we are to fulfill that purpose, then we must bear some fruit that others can see hanging on us. Yeah, right. yeah. We can't walk around here claiming to know God, to be followers of Christ, to be believers of Christ, to be lovers of the true and the living God, and yet we have no fruit. Right. Right. There's a problem with that. There's a problem with that. And in the text here, Christ in giving this parable, he gives this parable after he teaches a little bit in the earlier part of the chapter in the first five verses, he's teaching a little bit about repentance. And then following his teaching about repentance, he goes into this parable about a barren fig tree. In other words, a fruitless fig tree. And he says that this tree has been planted in his vineyard. Beloved, I, I um, you know, around Isaiah chapter 5, in that passage of scripture, is talking about a vineyard. And the vineyard itself represents the house of Israel, the people of God, the kingdom of God. And the vines or the plants or the trees thereof represent God's people. Amen. Represent God's people. So I have in, in looking at and in, in taking Isaiah chapter 5 into consideration, as I read through what Christ is speaking about in this parable, he says, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. I must take that to mean that the vineyard talk that's being represented here is also 
the kingdom of God. Yes. It's also the household of faith. And he is saying that he got some bad trees yeah. planted yeah. in his vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. Beloved, the house of God, the church of the true and the living God today is full of God's people. But please, people of God, do not be so naive to think that there are not some bad trees among us. There are some bad trees. There are some trees that bear no fruit. There are some trees that look healthy. They look like they belong because, you know, they got nice, bold, green, leafy leaves on them. All right. But they still don't have no fruit. The first question I asked or let me, let me go back before I ask that question. I want us to be clear of the types of trees that are planted among the people of God. All right. All right. First, you got the fruitful tree. Yeah. You got a tree that is rooted and planted on good ground with a solid foundation. The faith rooted in Jesus the Christ. That tree depends on the vine. That tree is connected yes, to the right stuff. Yeah, right. That tree bears some fruit. E even though the tree, the fruit may not be ripened yet, right. it's still beginning to bear signs of fruitfulness. Mm -hmm. Then you have babes. You have trees that have been planted but never experienced any growth. Oh, yeah. A tree without growth. And the thing is, when you look at a tree that does not grow, you begin to question who's watering the tree. Yeah. Oh, Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's a... You begin to question, is the tree receiving the right nourishment? Yeah. Is the tree just being planted? Nobody is working or tilling the ground around the tree. Nobody's fertilizing the tree. Yeah. So therefore, the tree has no growth. See, the thing is, you can get a lot of folk that come to church and will join a church and be a member of a church and they're there, but they never put their hand to the plow. All right. My God. They're there, they're doing that, they, they sing, you see them week after week, but they never bear any true fruitfulness of righteousness, of holiness, of love, of faith, of patience, of long suffering. We, we, we fail to see fruits of the Spirit of God. Yeah. That's the baby in Christ. And then you have among us the unconverted. You do know there are many among us who are on the church road yeah. who are no more saved than the pews we sit on. My God, my God. That's not... not only that, but any time the people of God assemble and come together, you better believe Satan will have some boys there. That's right. You better believe that when the sheep come together, there will always be wolves lurking. And you will find wolves in sheep clothing. You will find wolves on the deacon board. You will find wolves in the choir stand. You will find wolves on the usher board. And you will find wolves even with collars in the pulpit. These wolves are very cunning. They're very smooth in how they operate, They're educated very well and very intellectual, and they know how to fool sheep. Well, well. And to think that they too are also sheep. The unconverted are professors. They have professed something, but really they didn't profess a true profession of faith in Christ. They professed a profession of religion. 
Meaning they agree with what y'all do. Yeah. They agree with how y'all do church. Yeah. They agree with how y'all do worship. Yeah. They agree with their lifestyle because you agree with whatever lifestyle they choose to live. You do know it's folk out there that don't mind doing some stuff just because it's accepted in society. Yeah. And you got folk who will flock to that yeah. just because it agrees with what they agree with. Wolves yes. making professions yes. to religion and not professions of faith in Christ. Amen. But my question is something for us to think about, a little food for thought. Is the Bible says they were planted in his vineyard. But who planted them there? Who planted them there? See, see what we can't do. We can't make the mistake of assuming that God planted them there. All right, come on. We, we, don't, we can't make that mistake of just assuming that God planted it there. Because I, think, I would declare that if God plants it, it shall bear fruit. Yes, sir. Amen. If, if Christ plants it, it shall bear fruit. Yes, if Christ plants you in a church body, you will be fruitful there. You will get what you need there. You will grow there. But baby, if you just went there because your girlfriend goes there. All right. Or because they agree with what you agree with, did God really plant you? Uh -huh. Who planted them there? I told you before, we got folk that seem like they belong and that they're in the right place. And they got large green leaves on them. See, Isaiah chapter 5, I know right here in this parable, Christ doesn't allude to them having big green leaves but no fruit. But in Isaiah chapter 5, he talks about how the trees had leaves but no fruit. What does that mean? See, the trees with the leaves on them, you know, they big leaves too. Mm -hmm. They make a lot of noise. Yeah. <laughs> my God, my God. They, they, they make a lot of noise. Yeah. When the wind blows, they rustle. Yeah. They wave in the wind back and forth. All right. You know, and they, they seem to be loud. and They will attract some stuff. Uh -huh. They look like they are healthy and getting good water because surely this ain't a dead tree. If it was a dead tree, these leaves wouldn't be so bold and green. Beloved, they, they, they sit there and they, they appear like they belong, yet they still bear no fruit. Mm -hmm. they, they, now, now, the thing is, they may bear some fruit to bring glory to themselves. They may do some things to make it look like they got it all together. And the thing is, you know how we are as people, as human beings. We, we quit to put somebody on a pedestal. We quit to pat folk on the back, especially if they have some, uh, some characteristics or they have some resources or some things that are very attractive to us. And we'll make them feel like, we'll make it appear that they are righteous. But their fruit bears no fruit that glorifies Jehovah. No fruits of holiness, no fruits of righteousness. In other words, it's, it's a wild thing. Bringing forth wild grapes. Yeah. And you know what wild grapes do? Wild grapes bring out sour wine. In other words, it's good for nothing. So beloved, what does he say? He tells us then. He says, he came and he sought their own, and there was no fruit found on the tree. Then he said to the dresser, the gardener. Now, a lot of folks look at this in two different ways. You can look at it as the dresser being uh, preachers, ministers of God, ministers of the gospel. But, but I, I, I rather look at it as it being Christ. It's the approach I want to look at this text is that it being Christ and the keeper of the vineyard is God and is God the Father. But, but the gardener, the dresser, 
Keep in mind that this is Christ we're speaking of. And the Bible says that he said unto the dresser, I have come these three years seeking fruit on this fig tree. All right. And I'm not finding anything. And look at what he says. Cut it down. Yeah. Beloved, I, I, there, there is a harshness to this text. There is a harshness. And I, I want to touch on it for just a moment. Because it would be an insert, a disservice to you if we just fly by it. Yeah. But the Bible says, cut it down. Yeah. All right. He's come up on this tree for three years and it is yet to bear any fruit. He tells the dresser, get rid of the tree. Yeah. When I look at that, I mean, how can we argue with that? How can we really argue with that? that? That was the quick and easy and the most assured solution to the problem yeah. is to get rid of the bad trees. Yeah. Uh -huh. Get rid of the fruitless trees. Why not cut them down? He, he's telling us, why should we continue to allow these trees to drain from the ground? Why should we continue to allow these trees to sit there and disturbing everybody else? Why should we allow these trees to sit there and, and, and soak up water and, and soak up good nourishment and, and soak up good stuff from all the other trees around? Why should we keep it there? I see some of y'all may, I understand that you're, you're, you're starting to see a little bit of the harshness of it, that God is saying, just get rid of those trees. But why, why we want to think that that's being so harsh? Any keeper of any garden gets rid of the weeds. Yeah. yeah. Any keeper, if they are if they're keeping the tree and they're keeping the vines, and you know how vines are in the vineyard, they're all in a straight row, all uniform. Mm -hmm. But if you got a vine in the midst of them that's not bringing forth fruit, that vine got to be cut out. Yeah. Any good vineyard keeper, any good gardener or dresser would make that decision without hesitation. So how can we say that God is wrong or God is too harsh mm -hmm. for making a statement, I will just remove the bad trees? Yes, sir. Beloved, in thinking about it, the thing is, is not only are they hurting other trees, by taking away from them, robbing them mm -hmm. of what they came to get. I want you to just think about how often you've been sitting in church during service and somebody yeah. does something uh -huh. to rob you of receiving your blessing. Yes. Yes. How many times in the church body that you belong to, somebody gets in the way of you not only serving in the manner that you need or should serve, yeah. or, in the, or somebody getting in the way of you receiving yeah. what is due to you. Yeah. Beloved, these bad vines, they just get in the way. Yeah. These bad trees, the preacher is sitting out and he's sowing good seed. He's sowing good seed, and yet they're taking up water. They're taking up sunlight from somebody because they're throwing too much shade over the top. Yeah. Beloved, they just getting in the way. Yes, God said, we need to cut out these trees. Yes. The thing is, he also tells us, have I not given these trees sufficient amount of time mm -hmm. to bear some fruit? Some of y'all been sitting in church for 30 years. My God, my God. You ain't got a walnut on the tree. Oh. Beloved, God has given time. It, it ain't that God has already been patient. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want you to mistake that either. He's already been patient. Yeah. And at the same time, we, in the text, he's telling us three years. And, and, and the parable is just, be, just to be used metaphorically, okay? It's not... 
Now, maybe you take a little, but, but he's given the time for this fig tree to bear fruit in those three years. Now, any fig tree that does not bear fruit within three years ain't a good tree. It's, it, it, it's not good for anything. And the thing is, is you got to understand the care that has been that has went forward in those three years. In the three years, the fig tree, the ground had to be tilled around it. The ground had to be watered. The ground had to have some fertilizer. And yet the tree still didn't bear no fruit. But no, but I just wonder, how many of you have God continued to tear some stuff up around you? God tried to go in and flip the ground upside down and turn your situation upside down. And he tried to cut some stuff away from you. Go in every now and then and prune you on your left side and cut you on your right side and cut up over you and cut up under you. And yet you still bear no fruit. God has given some time. Remember, God is not a God that wastes his time. Anything that we go through is for a reason. If God is turning the ground over in your life, if he's turning and flipping some things upside down, it's for a purpose. It's for a reason. And, and the reason is so you will grow in him. The reason is so you will build stronger roots in the ground of Christ Jesus. The reason is so that you will get to the point of where you will bear some fruit. Yes. God has given you sufficient time yes. to repent yes, and bear some fruit. Yes, yes, but God knows our hearts. Yes, God knows our hearts and he knows the works of your heart. And he knows why you do the things that you do. And see, one of the things that I'm reminded of when when the Apostle John was writing in the book of Revelations and he got to his letter to the church at Laodicea and he told them when Christ told him write my words Christ said I know your works that ye are neither cold nor hot yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rather, he said, because you are lukewarm, mm -hmm. I spew you out of my mouth. Yeah. Beloved, we have so many of us that are in the household of God and we're neither hot nor cold. Yeah. We no longer have uh, a zeal for the Lord. Yes. We don't have this burning desire of servitude. This desire to want to please the Lord. Yeah, Jesus. Not only please him by coming to church and assembling ourselves together. As a matter of fact, God ain't even impressed by that. But you ought to have a desire to want to please him with how you love your neighbor. Yeah. To please him with how you share in your gifts. To please him with how you treat your co-workers. And how you love your wife. Yeah. How you love your children. How you treat your fellow man. Beloved, these are evidences that you love God. Yes, sir. I'm also reminded about, because he goes on and he tells them that we are blinded. About our worldly achievements. We're blinded by our worldly accomplishments. And see the thing is. is we, we associate or we, we measure a successful church. By the number of butts and seats. We measure a successful church by the size of the building. We measure a successful church by the size of the offering. But beloved, success is not measured by things. Yeah. Success is measured by results. Yeah. And results 
is not measured by how much money or how many baptisms you got. Yeah. But the results are how many have been born again. Yes, sir. How many have come to a saving knowledge of Jesus the Christ. Yeah. Beloved, you got to understand that it's not about your increased goods. Because the thing is, you can go by your increase that you see with your natural eyes. And you'll be blinded of your own wretchedness. You'll be blinded of your own misery. And you won't be able to see that you still stand poor, blind, and naked. You're still exposed before man. Oh, beloved, I'm reminded of a couple of things from a long time ago. But I've witnessed some people, and this brother was a preacher in my life. But the thing is, he had an abundance of a lot of things. He had an abundance of money. He had respect and honor among peers. The governor was sitting at his dinner table. But God got it, if you don't know my God, he will come through. If you don't praise him or give him the honor. of his dignity. When God came through and stripped him of his bank account, his self couldn't take it no more. His mind couldn't take it no more. And he took his own life. But if I know the goodness of the Lord and all that I have has come from him, but I have Jesus. 
glad today that when God said, when the father said, cut him down, and he would have been justified to take the axe to the tree. But I'm glad that mercy stepped right in on my behalf. I'm glad that mercy came down 42 generations. I'm glad that when Jehovah felt like it was judgment time, I'm glad that the mercy of God stood up and said, Father, prepare me a body. Father, send me our gold. It wasn't like all the rest of the days. 
But it was something about that day. Something got in me. Something got a hold of me. Something got down on my inside. It started to germinate. And something started to move around. And I started feeling funny in my heart. And all of a sudden, I was standing on my feet. And all of a sudden, there was clapping in my hands. All of a sudden, there was tears in my eyes. And I came running. What must I do to be saved? So baby, if you're still breathing, if God still has you among the people of God, just keep on coming. Because every day is another chance. Because you just don't know that the day just might be the day when God opens your ears and you hear the voice of the resurrection. Today might be the day where something changes you. Ain't God alright? Aren't you glad that He will never leave you? That's why we continue to preach and pray and teach and serve the masses. Yeah. Not because we believe that all of them are saved, but because we know there's some among us who definitely are not. Yeah. So, beloved, they need to hear something. They need to see something. So they'll come running. What must I do to be saved? Yes. It ain't water. It ain't church membership. But you must be born again. You must be made a new creature. You must be made over into something that is not of this world. You need a new birth date. You need a new heart and a new mind yes, so you can have a new walk and a new talk and a new service. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Ah, yes, I got a little happy. Right. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to quit. But I just wonder if there's one or two people that knows like I know that God is true to his word. That he is faithful to his word. And even though your fruit may not be right, just keep your hand in the master's hands and allow his word to be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. Allow the word of God to order your tongue and to order your steps and you will bear some fruit. I'll tell you one thing, it's nothing like the feeling of going some places where you used to go. Among people who knew your way back then. And when they see you the next time, they recognize you. They say, Marcus, there's something different about you. When they look at you and they try to offer you the same thing that you used to bring in the door yourself. No, thank you. I'm doing all right today. It's a different feeling to let others know that I am a child of God. Don't be ashamed to let your fruit bear. Don't be ashamed to go on your job with fruits of faith hanging from your arm. Don't be afraid to go into schools and let fruits of love hanging off your limbs. Don't be
before God. Come, come. Sin is yeah. the vine dresser. Yeah. Yeah. To start cutting away some trees. Beloved, we don't want to see trees cut away. We want to see trees, trees grafted in. We don't want to see trees cut off. We want to see trees poured out with love, nourishment. Beloved, you must bear some fruit because that is the evidence that you are connected to the vine. If there's no connection, if there's no spirit, there's no connection. And if there's no connection, there's no fruit. You must be connected to the true vine. And that is Jesus the Christ. I pray that this message has touched someone. If you're listening to this service and you don't know the Lord for yourself, or maybe you thought your whole life that you were saved, but yet you've questioned when you leave this earth whether you would go to heaven or hell. Maybe you thought you were saved, but you just realized today that the only reason you came is because little Johnny, the best friend, he came too. Well, the only reason you came is because Big Mama said that you need to quit playing and go get baptized and join church. And you knew for yourself that you was never really truly born again. Beloved, if this message has pierced your heart, give yourself to the Lord today. He's calling you. He's calling you and he's telling you to lay down your heavy burdens. He's telling you to put his yoke upon you. To sit at his feet and learn of him. For his yoke is easy and his burdens are light. I pray that you give your life over to the Lord today. I pray this message has pierced your heart today. And now you see God with fresh eyes for the first time. Thank you for joining us today. We love you with the love of Jesus. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Our prayers go out to all of the bereaved families who are dealing and suffering with loss of loved ones in this season. We're praying for those who are going through medical procedures and those who are recovering from medical procedures. We pray that the anointed Spirit of God will perform some healing on your behalf. We look forward to the day, beloved, when we will be able to assemble ourselves together. But in the meantime, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And see what God will continue to do in your life. May he continue to bless your home, bless your family, bless the work of your hands, Bless you on your job. Bless your endeavors. I pray for all these students who are graduating. These college students who are graduating college and going into the workforce. I pray, Lord, that you put them on the right path. I pray, Lord, that in all of their mistakes, that they learn from them. That they grow from them. I love you with the love of Jesus. Meet us midweek service at 2 p.m. We've been working and studying out of the book of Colossians. And we've been talking about honoring God the past couple of weeks. 
We'll continue with that this coming Wednesday. Beloved, I pray that you've been blessed. I pray that you have a blessed afternoon. Meet us here again. God bless you. God keep you. May his countenance continue to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Go in peace.